about this industry, Joe, because enjoy the brownies as we talk. Um, I came across some numbers that talked about the estimates of the medical and recreational marijuana industry. Cowan says that by 2030, the U.S. cannabis industry will be worth over $75 billion. Another report suggested that the, at the current growth rate, more cannabis will be sold in 2030 than in soda drinks. And Morningstar said it expects U.S. recreational cannabis sales to grow at a 25% compound annual growth rate. I mean, really significant numbers. There's a lot of optimism out there. Uh, you don't necessarily see it in the share prices anymore. Mm -hmm. What's the reality of what's going on in your industry? I think the reality is, you know, that's not hypothetical. We believe that today cannabis is a 75 to $100 billion industry. But importantly, most of it is served by the black market. So less than 10% of the transactions in cannabis last year were done through regulated stores like Curaleaf. And so that's what's exciting is we're not trying to tell you that this is an industry that needs to be created. It's already there. Right. What we need is regulated to markets to transfer out of the black market into the regulated. And that's just what Curaleaf is doing. So that's why we have great optimism in the future of our business and the industry, frankly. Well, you talk about then, like, let's get to the regulatory side of things. Is it taking a lot longer than you anticipated? I mean, progress is not fast and it's not linear. And so, um, you know, it depends on whose timetable. But what I would suggest is that 33 states now have medical marijuana mm -hmm. laws. 10 states have adult use laws. And that's been tremendous progress over the last couple of years. The dialogue is very vocal about adult use cannabis up and down the East Coast in markets like New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So I think it's reasonable to assume that given the social attitudes around cannabis, more states will enact adult use programs and more people will be able to buy cannabis in regulated, controlled environments. Right. And you just opened in Massachusetts, right? Yeah. In fact, yesterday we opened our first adult use store on the East Coast. And so that's a big transition for Cureleaf because we started out as a medical business. What right. we recognized many years ago was that millions of Americans were self-medicating with cannabis um, for very serious diseases, including cancer and epilepsy and a lot of other horrible conditions. And so we really entered this space to help people that were sick. Um, but what's happened over time is that, as I said, the, the social attitudes towards cannabis keep changing. It's becoming more mainstream. Right. And as states like Massachusetts adopt adult use programs, the medical operators are there. They have regulated programs, and they're the first ones to address that population. What's going to be the biggest part of the market? Because I certainly have CBD products. <clears throat> I have a lot of companies that keep coming in and saying, you know, try these, whether they're creams and lotions, there's that there's medical, there's recreational. How does the market play out ultimately? Yeah, is it a little bit of all that or what? It's all of that. The way we think about it is that, you know, if you think about cannabis for, for medical people, you know, the, the most vulnerable, sickest people in our population, cancer patients, epileptics, et cetera, use cannabis and get great benefit. Right. But, but that's ultimately a narrow part of the population, right? There are only so many people that are that sick. But then there's also part of the population that uses cannabis for, you know, called the euphoric element or the, the recreational aspect and maybe people want to replace Chardonnay you know with cannabis or scotch right and that's another segment but but the way I think about it is actually the biggest opportunity is cannabis as, as an adult use wellness product so you pointed out CBD there are literally millions of Americans now using CBD across the country for health benefits right cannabinoids have the ability to, to deliver amazing health benefits one of the main reasons why people actually go into an adult use store to buy cannabis is to sleep that's the number one condition is sleep. I don't consider sleep a recreational activity. I consider that a life activity. And so right. cannabis is going to become a wellness product that people will use all around the country for things like sleep, anxiety, maybe low-grade pain. And it, I really believe that's the biggest opportunity. Well, and I want to come back to that. I want to talk a little bit more about safety because there was an interesting survey that we found that um, Politico and Harvard's uh, School of Public Health said this past week that Americans now think marijuana is much less harmful than alcohol, tobacco, or cigarettes. Just one in five Americans believe marijuana is very harmful to people who use it. It's interesting. Does that surprise you? Not even a little bit. Um, Why? Because I think that people are realizing that, you know, people are reconnecting with nature and the food that they eat. And cannabis is a natural substance. It's been used for thousands of years. And I think people recognize that it has a legitimate place in our society. Um, and, and, and frankly, people use cannabis for a variety of reasons, as you point out. And so I think that trend will continue and more and more people will consider cannabis mainstream as more states adopt adult use programs. So I want to talk cannabis and vaping because that certainly has been a big issue. And I know you and I talk, uh, talked about this um, earlier. We've got a polling question and I want to see what everybody thinks. So pull out your phones, if you would, um, go into the browser and go to live polling. The recent vaping backlash is one overdue. Two overdone, about right. 
and I'm curious what everybody thinks. And so we'll wait for this to kind of come in. About right. The health concerns, as, as everybody continues to vote, so about right is what everybody thinks. The health concerns over vaping and the use and, and with CBD, I'm just curious, and marijuana, does that, is that gonna slow down your business? Well, what kind I, of problems does that create? I, I think it's really important to unpack vaping, and, and sorry, I'll take a minute here, but I think it's really no, important no, no, to no, unpack I'm... vaping, nicotine vaping and cannabis, right? So. Nicotine vaping, if you look at a company like Juul, they created a form factor and a product that was very attractive to people, and frankly, a lot of teenagers. And they had flavor profiles that were attractive to teenagers, and so now we have a lot of people that are reasonably upset that we have a lot of underage people, teenagers, vaping highly addictive nicotine cartridges. And I understand that. Let's also remind ourselves that almost half a million people die a year from cigarettes. So I would suggest that vaping has its rightful place in our society and possibly is a better alternative than smoking. That's one fact, right? And that's why there's a big pushback on vaping because people are upset. What's happened recently is that people are showing up in hospitals with acute lung illnesses, mm -hmm. largely driven by black market cannabis. Why? Because cannabis is now mainstream. People want to use cannabis, but they can't get it through a regulated safe source. A lot of these cases are happening in states that don't have regulated cannabis, period. So it's very clearly coming from the black market. And that's really the issue. We embrace regulation. We want regulated programs. Our, our biggest competitor is the black market. It's the drug dealer because he doesn't care what's in his products. He doesn't have to go through safety standards. He only cares about you getting high and giving him money. So that's, that's how we think about the industry. And I think you have to put it in that context to understand why we are trying to lead a world where cannabis is accepted, regulated, and safe. So let's go back to the regulated piece. What are the conversations you're having in Washington? Because I agree, even with CBD products, I don't know how everybody feels, but I want to know, because there's different substances or different levels, and I need to know what it is that I'm using. So where do we start to get those regulatory pieces? What are the conversations that you're having? I mean, we're work. in fact, I'll be in DC next week. We're working all the time in DC to create awareness that Americans want to use these products full stop, and they can deliver health benefits. And so the conflict between the federal and state law has to be resolved. I mean, there are 33 states with medical programs that's not sustainable. And so, right. And there's it's a kind lot of piecemeal, of right, at this yeah, point. Yeah, it is piecemeal. Right. And so I, but I think the federal government does need to step in. The FDA does need to step in, provide comprehensive regulations for the country so people can be ensured that they're using but safe products. But is that going to happen anytime soon? I mean, I hope so. We're pushing for that. We want a regulated, safe industry. And so that's what we're lobbying very hard to get. I mean, there's a, there's a bill that's being considered, which is called the States Act, which would let states make their own policy and would likely create some room for the federal government to come in and regulate and create standards like they do in every other part of our right. lives. Does it get done in a year? I mean, look at this political climate, this legislative climate. It's bad business to predict what happens in Washington, D.C., for sure. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't really know, but I, we're going to work hard to try to get, get a uh, law that recognizes states' rights to have cannabis laws. But does it hold back the growth until we get something like that? Ironically, no. I mean, hmm. that's, the, that's the thing is that the states don't seem to care that the federal government thinks you know, marijuana is a Schedule One drug with no medicinal value. 33 states have enacted medical programs, and more will do so at the ballot box next year. That's the amazing thing about cannabis laws around the country is that they have, they, they have very rarely been done by the legislature. The vast majority of cannabis laws is because people show up to the ballot box and vote for cannabis. And I think that progression will continue. I mean, states like Utah, Oklahoma, not just, you know, blue states, states all over the country now are enacting cannabis laws because people recognize that citizens should be able to use these products. I want to ask you about your acquisition of Select, right? Because this is a bet on vaping, correct? An well, adult user. It's a bet on the number one adult use brand in the country. They're, they're more than a vape company. They're primarily a vape company, but they sell a gummy, they sell a tincture. And what's exciting about our platform is that because cannabis is a closed loop, it's a state by state program, cannabis can't cross state lines, there's really only one company in the country that looks like Cureleaf, Cureleaf, and we have a 19-state coast-to-coast platform right. when we close our transaction with Grassroots. And so we'll be able to take the best adult-use brand on the West Coast and make it a national brand, and that's really exciting for us. But tell us about Select, because it was a, almost a, a billion-dollar purchase, right? But you guys have amended the terms recently, because you we said did. kind of the market conditions changed. Is it because you don't think it's going to be as lucrative, or what's going on? No, I mean, you know, when we did the deal, it was a share exchange. It was for 95 million shares. We felt in light of the vape crisis and market conditions, it was more appropriate to de-risk, frankly, the, the uh, investment, make the base consideration 40 million shares left, and, and let them earn their way to that consideration.